Hey everyone, so it's the two year anniversary of NVIDIA's GeForce GTX 1080, the very first Pascal GPU to make it to the gaming marketplace. Two years that we've been on the same architecture then, two years where we've seen no real technological advances, aside from the Pascal Titans, of course, and GTX 1080 Ti. Still Pascal though, just scaled up versions of that classic 1080. What we have had though is a hint of what is to come in the form of Titan V, but 3K for a GPU? Yup, no thanks. The drought is coming to an end though. Rumors are pointing to a July release date for the next gen Nvidia cards, and while I can't confirm that for sure, I do know that the date is close enough to be kind of in that region. So what can we expect? Okay, so yeah, occasionally I do produce videos based on rumors that are kind of out there, where the weight of evidence is overwhelming or where my own sources have confirmed that they're true. Gotta hand it to Nvidia though on this one because next gen Nvidia cards, be it Volta, Turing or whatever the name of the architecture actually is, well, actual spec leaks have been thin on the ground. So this time around, pre-production photos from the production line? Yeah, none of those whole series of spec leaks that broadly agree with one another? Yeah, we've not had that either, but going in, there are some hard facts to weigh in with, as well as some remarkable coincidences we can almost certainly take as read. So, first up, the facts then. The next-gen NVIDIA cards may not actually be called Volta, but they'll certainly be derived from the Volta cards that are actually out there right now, like the Titan V. And uh, yeah, this sounds a bit confusing, but essentially Volta carries a lot of the architectural features aimed at AI and deep learning markets. Now these are areas where Nvidia makes a ton of cash, but you know, it would just amount to wasted silicon on a gamer card. So that's why we're hearing code names like Turing. The traditional GPU elements of Volta are retained, but the chips can be smaller and leaner than their Volta counterparts. Our next fact is that the next-gen NVIDIA line will almost certainly be based on a refined version of the 16 nanometer FinFET production process used in Pascal. It's called 12 nanometer FFN, FFN basically standing for FinFET NVIDIA. Yes, chip giant TSMC has created a process specifically designed for NVIDIA GPUs, but perhaps the name is a little misleading. It's more of a refinement to the 16 nanometer process as opposed to a brand new 12 nanometer one. Expect power efficiency advances here as opposed to greater transistor density. Now Titan V is built on 12 nanometer FFN and yeah, it's the biggest Nvidia GPU ever made in terms of silicon area. The extra horsepower here comes from more silicon, more area and more CUDA cores. Next fact, okay, maybe not a hard fact as such, but it's almost certainly gonna happen. A move to a new memory system, GDDR6, lower power consumption, higher bandwidth, and yes, as we've seen in the past, compute power kind of scales with bandwidth. So we really kind of need it. Now we can reasonably expect GTX 1180 or GTX 2080, depending on how the naming works out, well, we can expect it to have a 256-bit memory bus. With GDDR6, official specs there suggest we should get 576 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, up from the 320 gigabytes on GTX 1080 and slightly ahead of Titan XP, which had 550 gigabytes per second. Now that would come from a top-end G6 configuration and various flavors are available. So don't be surprised if you see any of these numbers in the final product. But really and truly, I'd be disappointed to see a reduction in bandwidth, certainly compared to GTX 1080 Ti, which came in at 484 gigabytes per second. So what else of a factual basis can we say right now about next-gen NVIDIA GPUs? Okay, so every new piece of silicon from NVIDIA comes with some kind of bet on the future of gaming, some kind of hardware acceleration feature or features designed to give GeForce an edge over the competition. Now, Pascal introduced simultaneous multiple projection primarily designed for VR acceleration, but with multi-monitor applications too. And of course, to be clear, AMD does the same thing. 
hence new tech like AA FP16, so-called Rapid Packed Math, which debuted in Vega. Now at GDC this year, we got a preview of one of the new features NVIDIA is championing, real-time ray tracing, the gold standard in global illumination. Now this is a close collaboration with Microsoft who is working it into DirectX, but as impressive as it could be for the higher end cards at least, I kind of think we should expect more from the features side of Nvidia's next gen GPUs. I'm curious to see what that might bring. One thing that numerous Titan V tests have shown is that the next gen architecture does seem to be geared towards better performance on lower level APIs like DirectX 12. So yeah, as it happens, I asked a key PC developer what would be the best GPU for their game back in the day. The response, an Nvidia card with decent async compute support. Based on Titan V tests for games that use this feature heavily, it does seem that this is a focus for the new architecture. And yeah, it's about time, bearing in mind how long AMD has had an advantage here. As things stand, we're kind of moving into a strange no man's land of the gaming landscape. Hardware sale volumes overall are down in console land and the current generation is mature with replacements likely by the end of the decade. And this is an exciting time. It's where we'll see competing pitches for the future of gaming. Nvidia has the advantage of the most performant graphics hardware on the market, bar none, but power isn't enough. There's got to be a vision too. Now, ray tracing is a part of that, but I don't think it's the end of the story in terms of potential hardware accelerated features in the Volta slash Turing line. So yeah, at this point, we are moving into speculation territory. And as I said earlier, rumored specs are kind of thin on the ground. There's only one leak at the moment, and it looks like this. A 400 millimeter square slice of silicon housing 3,584 CUDA cores running with a boost clock of around 1.8 gigahertz, yielding 13 teraflops. Interestingly, that's fewer CUDA cores than the current Titan XP, but clocks are higher. Memory bandwidth is higher. Now, of course, we've got to take this leaked spec with a pinch of salt, mainly because of the lack of secondary leaks that kind of corroborate the story. However, if those specs are anything close to reality, the performance turnout kind of looks eerily similar to the kind of gains we saw with Nvidia's Maxwell GPUs back in the day. Now, Maxwell has a lot in common with Volta slash Turing, actually. It's a new architecture, but it's effectively based on an existing process with similar clocks exactly how Maxwell compared to Kepler. And what we saw there in gen-on-gen -gen gains was essentially an appreciable but not massive leap in performance between the GTX 980 and the prior gen 780 Ti. In today's terms, that would put a prospective 1180 on par or slightly better with the Titan XP, which is about five to 7% faster than the 1080 Ti but maybe Nvidia can push a little harder now. Now, I'm not gonna to dwell too much on the leaked 1180 specs because there is only one unverified source right now. However, alongside that, there is a purported 1170 spec. Unfortunately, it's from the same single unverified source, but it certainly looks interesting stroke plausible. It's the same core chip as the 1180, no surprises there, but CUDA core counts drop from 3584 to 2688. And yes, that kind of makes sense. A prospective 1170 would offer a bump, a small one, I guess, over 1080 in the same way that 1180 should beat the Titan XP. So yeah, that's really all we know right now and could even sort of guess about 11 series Nvidia because they have done a pretty good job of keeping things locked down there. I mean, we're even guessing that it's gonna be called 11 series at this point, but the bottom line is that there's no big process advantage. Plus what we've seen from Titan V so far means that a kind of Maxwell-like increase in performance really is more realistic than the stratospheric leap we saw with Pascal. Gut feeling here is that the biggest gains here may well be down to architecture specific feature implementations and a better grip on the kind of advantages offered by low-level APIs like Vulkan and DX12. It's been the one key weakness in Pascal and I expect that to be remedied at the very least. 
Right, so where does this all leave AMD then? Well, unless the firm has been holding back on its roadmaps and purposefully misleading investors, which I kind of doubt, Vega 64 will still be the best the firm has to offer performance-wise in 2018. And obviously that's disappointing because, well, Vega 64 wasn't really fast enough in the first place to be competitive with Nvidia's best. In effect, Nvidia's biggest competition for the 11 series at the high end will be the 10 series. You know, in terms of the consumer, it's never great when one company is effectively competing against itself. Now, AMD has a 7 nanometer Vega we could see next year, and there's also a mysterious Vega 12 GPU in the pipeline, which may well be a new mainstream product. But really, it looks like the only new architecture this year that we will be seeing seems to be Nvidia's Volta slash During. But in the meantime, please do like and subscribe as always. And if you've already subbed, ring the bell to ensure you never miss any of our content. Oh, and a quick shout out for the DF Patreon, if you do appreciate what we do and want to do more to support us. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.